Hi, I'm Hilary Hahn, and I'm here with Kalaramna. <laughs> We're both violinists, <laughs> but actually, I'm here um, interviewing Kala for um, her composition because she is one of the composers in the 27 Encores, and I'm really thrilled that she's participating. Would you like to talk a little bit about how you started in music? Mm, I come from a family of musicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm the seventh generation in music in my family. Uh, music has been uh, with me from the time I've been, I was born, or rather in my mother's womb. I've been listening to music and uh, I started the violin when I was two and a half years old. And I've been performing from the age of 12. That's me. <laughs> And you, you compose in a way that a lot of people wouldn't expect from someone who's actually writing music, which is that you play it yourself. Yes, uh, that's because of my, I would call it the tradition in Indian music. Uh, musicians do compose, mm -hmm. and performers. And some of the performers are really very good composers too. So, so I, I picked up that. So you compose from, um, when you're performing, you don't compose by writing things down in no. advance. Yeah. It's in the moment, right? In the moment. Mm -hmm. And some of my compositions, uh, uh, you know, happen right up on stage. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing, yeah. And the piece that you wrote for me, mm -hmm. uh, that didn't come from a performance, did it? No, this was specially written for you. After you, thank you. <laughs> after I called you, <laughs> after you called me and you said, and I asked you, you want a uh, fast composition or a slow composition? What is it you'd like? And you said anything. So <laughs> I said okay. Then I'll do something which is traditionally Indian and which sticks to the uh, classical form, which is it begins with uh, an introduction called the ala. Uh, one could even play the scale up and down and say this is the scale, introduce the scale. But uh, a lap is a form of introduction where, you know, it's like you're introducing a person. So the scale, which is called Charukeshi, is the person here. So that's what I started with and then I, I skipped the middle portion of the concert form. <laughs> Which and would last about an hour or Which would or last more. about an hour. And I ended it with the tarana. Tarana is a form where you have uh, music with no words. It's totally the notes uh, which express everything. There are no words to express. And we have our instruments to express <laughs> it, right? Yes. Yeah. So you wrote it by playing it yourself? Yes. And uh, dictation. Yes. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful so I recorded it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I played it. I don't notate, so I just recorded it. And mm -hmm. There you have it. <laughs> it's a really wonderful way to connect with the instrument, I think, to compose on the instrument itself. Yes. yes. And you play other instruments too? No. I As part of your training? Did you part of my that? training is uh, uh, I play the violin, I sing, mm -hmm. and I play a bit of tabla too. Mm -hmm. Because every Indian musician needs to know singing and also the tabla. Do you, you sing know? on stage? Yes, I do. Oh. Yes. How many people are usually on stage singing? And how many people play violin on stage at the same time? Um, not many. <laughs> Probably uh, one, of, one among the few. Um, I was curious what training in classical music in India, like Indian classical music, what does that mean, training? Training begins with, uh, it says the same as in uh, Western tradition, the major scale and then exercises on the major scale. Hmm. And uh, from then on, we have 4,000 different, 4,000 and over scales in Indian music. Mm -hmm. So. After we kind of get proficient with the major scale, mm -hmm. we move on to other scales and work on them, then little compositions, and then the art of improvisation, improvisation is all taught to us. Do you know all 4,000 scales yourself? No. 
No, that's very hard because in India we have till date no music is written down. Mm. So it's the oral tradition where you go to a teacher and then the teacher teaches you, mm -hmm. and whatever possible you get from that teacher, and then you you might hear nowadays because uh, there's so many other contraptions to use to you know record music and listen mm -hmm. to. So we get to listen to lots. But earlier it was such that you would go to different masters to learn. Mm -hmm. And each one would give you an insight into what they have learned from their ma uh, teachers. And so it's passed on from generation to generation by the oral tradition. Mm -hmm. so, so that's, I have, pro I probably know about uh, four or five hundred scales, which is really, really good in Indian music. <laughs> That's a lot of scales. Yeah. Kids. <laughs> you think 12 is a lot. Um, and I guess, I guess, well, yeah, so one final question, unless there's something you'd like to add, is what do you like most about music? Mm, most about music, music is my life. Mm -hmm. Everything revolves around it, and I enjoy doing music. And, uh, it's every time you sit with the instrument, what you're doing is new. It's not boring. Mm -hmm. It's not like, uh, okay, I've done this, now, now what next? I never get that feeling. Mm -hmm. Everything is new again and again, it's new. And the, and the study is never ending. There's so much more. It's, it feels like you're just a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I really like that because it keeps me grounded, it keeps me mm, uh, busy mm -hmm. and wanting to know more. Mm -hmm. Life is never boring. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you'd be, you'd understand this. <laughs> yes, it is not boring. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much.